I've talked so many times about the, the techniques that are used for controlling people's minds because we're all controlled. And you brought an in any nation, and of course you have culture creators that take over and they give you your culture, they bend your culture, they alter it, they direct your culture, and it works very, very well. It actually can form cultures across the world into the same one-track system, and it's happening too. Big money's behind it, of course, and political agendas, and again to the big private foundations with their armies of non-governmental organizations that are terribly well-funded. So you can't really compete with them with the kind of money, that the trillions actually, that throw out every year across the world by these big foundations. But you can keep up with what's happening at least and know what the cons are. And one of the biggest cons to take over from all the previous cons and stock markets and everything else is the carbon trading, of course. I've talked about that before too. And remember, some of the guys who set up the system we're living through now, guys who are long dead, wrote lots of books about the 20th century and the coming 21st century and the changes they'd have to make even in the 20th century to prepare us for the 21st century, which is called the century of change. Change is good. That's what they say. Change is good. That's what they meant by that. Because this is the century where all of the big long-term goals of a particular group come into effect. Something that's been planned for centuries actually comes into effect under the guise of equality and, and brotherly love and all that kind of stuff is all being manifested across the world. And it's really to benefit a single um, group, really, an elite who run the world. And they run, they've already run its finances for a long time, but now it goes into the biggest cons of trying to pull off way beyond stock markets and so on and investments and, and all the mortgage phony stuff that were put out and crashed the banks. That was all intended because they lose nothing when they crash the banks. They know governments will bail them out. And um, But the next thing, of course, is carbon credits. Big, big money to be involved in carbon credits. And eventually the whole, every single individual has to eventually pay all energy taxes and carbon credits. That's what it's all about. It's, um, it's called tax farming. Tax farming is part of history. If you go through history to find out who the tax farmers were, and how, how kings and queens would bring them in from other countries to tax their own people. And these people had nothing in, in no affiliations with the, these native populations. They actually hated them, in fact, to an extent. And so it was kind of mutual in, the, in a, an extent. But today it's, I mean, they went into the stock markets and now it's tax farming again through carbon stocks and credits and everything else. So just for existing which used to be called a head tax, should be taxed, and also for, for the consumption that you need to exist like any creature in the world, you're going to pay for it mightily so that uh, this ultra-elite can live even like never, ever before with riches that have never, they've never seen before. They've only dreamed of for centuries. It's all coming true for them, and it's done through conology. You con the public through science. Now, Bertrand Russell talked about this many, in many articles that he wrote in papers, magazines, and in his own books. And Lord Bertrand Russell was a member of this uh, world elite. He, he helped uh, organize the international organizations that are still running the world today. And, um, and he, it's an utter snob, of course, but he, he pushed socialism as a technique of gaining an army, basically a land army that would work behind them and, and push all these things through. And on behalf of the elites, he was, he believed in eugenics too. He also believed there were too many of the working class and they should be kind of wiped out gradually over the years. And he believed in a scientific society running the whole show on behalf of the elites. And that's what you have. He said, eventually the public will be unable to do anything without the advice of an expert. And he gave examples way back in his own day. I mean, in his day back in the 40s, say in the 50s, 1940s, 50s, he said that eventually mothers would know how to change the diapers on their own children. And that was laughable back then because everybody brought up, was brought up uh, and the families where babies were born and everybody knew how to change diapers. But now we get to go for lessons for it and all that. And even then too, even pregnancy was not classified as an illness, a disease that you abort. It was a natural thing. Uh, strange that, isn't it? And of course for thousands of years folk believed that. And there was no sort of pre-lessons uh, um, uh, on how to have a child. It just happened and no one uh, was fussed over it at all. It was all quite natural. But now everyone has to go and see and listen to experts for everything. You can't turn on a weather channel or whatever without hearing that every two millimeters of rain is going to be a flood. 
uh, or a couple of millimetres of snow is going to be a whiteout. Uh, and they just keep hyping up nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. And if it's, re- if it's wet outside, they tell you how to dress. Like you're all fools, like zombies, you see. And it's chronology and it's, 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 it's training through repetition until people cannot think for themselves. Now, again, I've mentioned before that Zygmunt Brzezinski mentioned uh, in, in his Between Two Ages and the Technotronic Era that's inside that one. He talked about the uh, this coming system. He said, it was already there back in the 1970s when he wrote the book. And he said, too, that um, that people eventually will be unable to reason for themselves, to reason through information. He said that all they'll be able to do is to repeat the previous night's uh, download that they got from the news. And that's already here. He said eventually the people will actually expect the media to do the reasoning for them, like an appendage to your brain. And that truly has happened. It truly has happened. And, and of course, he wasn't talking out of a guess or of an of of intuition. He was up there with the NSA, and he knew what they were working on. He knew all the techniques of the of the culture creators and the mass media and where it was going and, and what its jobs were and so on. A whole list of things they had to accomplish. Most of them have been accomplished already. So, you see, nothing out there is there by itself for your entertainment or anything else. Everything's out there to indoctrinate, to bend your mind and direct your future and your opinions. They give you your opinions. Now, at one time, people were were very, very suspicious of news media because they're all owned by private companies or governments like the BBC. And um, and so they took everything with a pinch of salt and they tried to find out more information and find out what really was going on behind the information that was dealt out to them. They'd, they'd fill in all the blank pieces so they were suspicious, but not now. People really do think the media is there as an, as an appendage to their brain to do the reasoning for them. And people have a hard time coming to their own conclusions because they're not, all their whole life, they haven't been trained to use reasoning and logic it's pretty well gone. It's sad that, but it's gone. But again, Russell said, as I said, he said that eventually experts, people would, would be unable to do anything without the advice of experts. And we're really, really here. Now, this big carbon credit nonsense is part of that too, because every mafia in the world, there's many kinds of mafia, remember. It's not, it's not the, the Italian mob we're talking about here, uh, bigger than that, uh, international mobs. Uh, and they're all in, in it too with the big, Foundations, etc. Remember the Royal Institute of International Affairs, Council on Foreign Relations, their own historian Carol Quigley said, we take on all kinds of people, communists, uh, fascists, capitalists, uh, dictators, tyrants, we don't care. We take them all on board. And then that also goes too for the big mob bosses. And there's lots of mob bosses, believe you me, up in high finance. Lots of them. And especially in the US. A lot of them came in from other countries, even Russia. And they're up there in the stock markets and in government. And so there's a lot of, they've never seen so much money almost within their grasp. I think they push this off, but they need this whole thing about global warming to make it work. And hence you have thousands of scientists paid incredible amounts of money to push the, this political social line of global warming, global warming. Mind you, they're very well rewarded, aren't they? The self-interest involved. And it gives them more personal power too. Now they're suddenly important. Before, no one would give them time of day. What do you do? I work in the weather. Oh, okay. And that was it, you see. Now, I read an article earlier this week to do with uh, global warming and, and chemtrails, geoengineering, they call it, in the scientific community. And, of course, for years they've been denying it was happening. And for years, the, every every year they put out their global meetings on geoengineering, all these scientists and say, well, if we did do this, it could have terrible consequences, and so on. And then I read an article this week from the the Guardian on the air here, and it was talking about it already has caused, so they admit it in their own article, it's already caused drastic effects. And um, so they've been doing it since steadily since 1998, with lots of tests long before that, but steadily in North America, say, and in Europe since 1998. And this article I'm about to talk about here, 
it goes over that article again in, 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 uh, in more detail. It says, scientists seek to legitimize geoengineering while acknowledging its catastrophic effects. Now remember, behind all this is what's to come out of this, apart from depopulating the planet, which it's already doing, even animals are dying. It is, um, it's also the, the big carbon thing. Countries are bet every, the whole future is on this big boom of money that's going to flow into them from all over from carbon credits. There has never been such a mafia concept before. This is, this is one today. It's, it's way beyond anything. It says there's still so many people who believe that anyone pointing out chemtrails in the sky and asking questions is somehow out of tune with reality. But it's slowly changing as geoengineering and its effects cannot be kept under wraps any longer. It's not surprising that the first to come out in mainstream media are so-called experts playing on the current scientific consensus, they claim that the Earth is warming and a climate catastrophe is imminent. They call on geoengineering to be regulated on a global scale. So, again, a, a feigned crisis, uh, to, and they're going to come in and save you all. So just obey them and bow down and pay up. I mean, that, that's a simple old trick, you see. And it says, um, published in The Guardian, it says, Earth cooling schemes needed uh, need global sign-off, the researchers say. They want a, a globalized governance system to do all, take over all the geoengineering. It says, controversial geoengineering projects that may be used to cool the planet must be approved by world governments to reduce the danger of catastrophic events, the British scientists said. The Met Office researchers, remember the Met Office in the Hadley Center? They came out with all the emails where, they were, where it was quite evident they were fudging all their figures and so on. Same place, Met Office researchers have called for global oversight of the radical schemes after studies showed they could have huge unintended impacts on some of the world's most vulnerable people. Hi folks, we're back cutting through the matrix. We're reading an article about geoengineering. And it says, packed nicely into the language of preventing catastrophic incidents and protecting some of the world's most vulnerable people, they argue for a global sign-off by governments. And it says, the massive complexity associated with geoengineering and the potential for winners and losers means that some form of global governance is essential, said Jim Haywood at the Met Office's Hadley Center in Exeter. It's interesting to note that this comes from the Hadley Center the same institution that was at the centre of Climate Gate scandal with all their emails when they fudged all their statistics and, so, and talked about it. Some of the most prominent advocates of man-made global warming are working there. As people are slowly are waking up to the facts of global engineering, uh, geoengineering and start questioning the practice which has been going on for decades under the radar of the public and without debates in national parliaments or the UN, this awakening leads to the need to legalise this practice. This is exactly what these scientists and experts are now calling for. It's, however, interesting that they admit that through geoengineering, catastrophic events already have taken place. And that's true in that article, they admit it's already happened. It says that the dangers arose in projects that cooled the planet unevenly. In some cases, these caused devastating droughts across Africa. and others, they increased rainfall in the region, but left huge areas of Brazil parched. And it's also the south, and south of, of the U.S. as well. It says, while the unaware public is wondering why there are droughts in one region and deluges in the other, why there are unprecedented wildfires in one region, in and out of season hurricanes and others, the messing around with the atmosphere has been going on at an accelerated rate. Now it seems that even the advocates of the global warming theory get a little scared. It says, the warming builds on work by scientists and engineers to agree to regulatory framework that would ban full-scale geoengineering projects at least temporarily. See, they've been, this is a mission they've been doing doing full-scale geoengineering projects for quite some time, but allow smaller research projects to go ahead. And, of course, if you get dumped, the stuff dumped on you, all these chemicals dumped on you, then that comes into their winners and losers. Obviously, you'll be the loser. It says, all in all, it's a half-hearted attempt to justify the massive stratospheric geoengineering that's going on, and by asking for an international regulatory framework, they hope they can legalize their past catastrophic actions. They acknowledge that there are massive complexities associated with geoengineering and, by extension, massive complexities with climate science in general because they're 
pouring chemicals and sulfates now on you, as well as aluminum oxides and barium and, and even some strontium. It says, if these scientists and experts were serious, they would simply admit to the fact that climate science is far from an agreement on the scale of global warming, or even if it takes place at all. Instead of calling for an immediate end to stratospheric geoengineering and plead guilty to having messed up the natural cycles of the weather patterns, they now want an absolution by international regulation, making geoengineering legitimate retrospectively. Now, they know that if they admit it, come out and say, yeah, we have, well, you see, there's going to be thousands, maybe millions of lawsuits going in. Because so many folk have died of this, you know. People with respiratory problems. And today, so many folk have respiratory problems and asthmas now. Because we've got, we've got the new asthma, the new normal, where people in their 30s and 40s get it for the first time because all, since all the spraying started. And they get infections they can't clear up. And they're very young. are also popping off here and there with it. And so are the elderly. So they can't afford to say, yeah, we've been killing you. You understand? So as it says here, they want to get an international regulation making geoengineering legitimate retrospectively. In other words, cover, the, cover what they've done already. And of course, there's no mention in, in this mainstream article about the military use of weather modification and the high uh, uh, aural aerial uh, research project, the HARP facilities. Now there's any information about the ingredients found in the toxic mixture that spread and its effects on all living things. It says the seemingly benign article morphs into a nice piece of disinformation by omission. Having said this in these times, it is an act of courage by the Guardian to touch this issue at all and to include one thoughtful voice, that of Matthew Watson, who leads the SPICE project at Bristol University, who said, says this paper tells us there are consequences for our actions, whatever we do. There's no get-out-of-jail-free card. Well, we shouldn't be in jail in the first place. Because all this nonsense about global warming is just that, folks. It's nonsense. It's an excuse to control the entire world and everyone who lives on it. That's what it is. They change your whole way of life. They raid people in Britain, for instance, that actually go through people's homes checking to see if you've got the latest efficiency fridge and stuff like that. I mean, it's disgusting, the power that's been given. And again, the ultra-big mafia that runs the world. And believe you me, there's different kinds of mafia and levels of it. Once you get up into the elite level, then you see, whatever you do is then legal. It's called government. It's called government, and you're a CEO of a corporation. Or that's all the legal side of it. And that's generally where they end up. And they need slaves. Lots of slaves, because that's the only, Karl Marx was right on that. All, all wealth comes from labor. And these guys at the top don't believe in labor for themselves. It's anathema to them. So it all comes from you. There's always been slavery in one form or another. And we're in the process of creating a more efficient form of slavery. That was Charles Galton Darwin in the 1950s. Think about it. 